Hello, True Crimers. It is time for another one of my series that I call Still Unsolved Mystery. When I get some money, I'll probably get a boob job. My boobs are really giant, and I'm a man, so I don't, I don't want them. And this is the Still Unsolved Mystery of Philip Frazier. Viewer discretion is advised. This case aired originally on Unsolved Mysteries on January 15th, 1992. Philip Fraser was born on January 3rd, 1965 in Anchorage, Alaska, and he was the son to two doctors. Nice. On June 14th, 1988, Philip would leave his house and he was going to drive from Alaska to Washington State because he had to go enroll at the college he was going to be attending. And that was Evergreen College. Apparently, he had experienced a couple issues with his car, so he was running a little behind, but he got to the Canadian border on June 17th, and when he was there, uh, the uh, RCMP actually took his gun because he brought two guns with him, um, and it was illegal for United States citizens to bring guns into Canada, so he no longer had them. On January 18th, a man fitting this description, he's a very... Dumb face. This is him. This is him. Watch. Mm. Whatever. He was a hitchhiker, and he came into a this local diner. This is in Canada at that point. Well, this fella entered the cafe, and he looked very disheveled. He looked like possibly maybe he was homeless, or at the very least, he was some hitchhiker who was traveling across the states, the country, or whatever. They actually said his behavior was really odd and it was borderline creepy um, to the point where one of them thought he must have been like an escaped insane asylum patient. Um, but he would end up paying his tab and he left the cafe. As soon as he did that, um, a car pulls into the parking area. One of the owners of the diner looked out and noticed that the young man inside the car was like rummaging through some stuff as if he was like looking for something. Like he just kind of stopped his car where he stopped it to find something real quick. And then they noticed he began to drive away. Well, this unknown man, he began to kind of walk towards the car that was trying to leave. He ran up to it and kind of opened the door and basically it's assumed he must have asked the young man in the car for a ride. Apparently the young man said yes because this unknown man got in the car. Approximately eight hours later and 200 miles south of where he was last seen at the cafe, um, a couple uh, came across a man in a car. The car was pulled off to the side of the road, and when this couple pulled up to him, uh, the man inside said, I'm having some car trouble, um, any way you can help. So, uh, they actually would end up helping him tow his car back to their home. At that point, it was kind of late in the night, and so they told the stranger, you can sleep in our basement tonight. Duh, no, God, the 80s hit different. When the next morning came, um, the, they were like having breakfast, right? The man came up from the basement. He introduced himself as Philip Frazier. He said, yeah, my parents, they're doctors in Alaska. I'm going to Evergreen College. That's where I'm on my way to go enroll. He then told him that he would sell the car he was in because he needed money to get a plane ticket to get home. Well, the gentleman, the Good Samaritan said, um, I mean, can you wait till Monday and I'll buy the car for you. But I guess this man, Philip apparently, said, um, that's not gonna be enough time. And so he said, never mind. At some point during this little breakfast interaction, Philip pulls out a wallet and then he pulls out a second wallet. He's got two of them. He begins rummaging through them, looking through them. He looks really odd, really kind of nervous. He then goes out to his car and he fixes it himself. Uh, apparently it was a fan belt issue. Then he takes off. 12 hours later, a burned out car was found. And it was found about 300 miles away from the Good Samaritan's house. Six weeks after that, the body of 27 year old Philip Fraser was found. It was about 70 miles from the Good Samaritan's house. He had a gunshot wound into his head and that's how he was killed. Given the fact that the body was found 70 miles from the Good Samaritan's house and his car was found hundreds of miles away, it is widely believed that the man that was actually interacting with the Good Samaritan was in fact not 
uh, Philip Fraser, that Philip Fraser was likely already dead. It had to be this hitchhiker. And these are several composite drawings that were made of him. This one was also released Jesus. Tits, oh God, that's terrifying. Um, but they really had no luck. No one recognized the man. Um, so they were, they were just, they were done. They were, they were lost. They didn't know what to do because there really wasn't any evidence left behind with his body. The car was completely charred to a crisp. There was nothing left inside of it to even count as evidence. Now, in recent years, um, there was speculation that his killer may have been a serial killer a Canadian serial killer by the name of Michael McGray. And if you look at him and put him side by side to one of the composite drawings, he does look pretty damn similar. Um, this guy apparently killed hitchhikers, but they've never been able to link him to the murder itself of Philip. And to this very day, this case is still very much unsolved.